I would, he said, you can stay, marry me. You can stay in the country for five years. I was like, I don't want to be here for five more minutes. But anyway, so I came back to the United States with nothing I had because I left. Only thing I left China with was what I could carry because I needed them not to know I was going to the airport. So I had to have somebody else scan their phone to get me on the subway to get to the Sassy woman trucker in the building. Hey. A Saturday night conversation, man. Well, let me just start off by saying thank you very much for reaching out. You was spotlighted on the channel about a week ago. Um, one of my subscribers sent me your video, and it was very interesting. And, and, we we had something in common. Number one, interesting to the fact that it was another trainer video, as always. And you're from Ohio, the great state of Ohio. That's where I'm from. Yes, yes. So before we before we get into anything, I, I need to know what, what what part of Ohio you reside in? Cincinnati. Okay, now the 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 the, the super, well, they didn't win the Super Bowl, but they they was in the Super Bowl. So I had to give it I had to give it up to the Bengals. My my team, the Cleveland Browns, we still we 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 still making waves, but I I was happy that that the Bengals, at least an Ohio team finally made it to the Super Bowl. Are you a football fan? I am not. Uh. <laughs> so, sorry. So, how do you... But but, I, I guess I was happy for him, too. <laughs> so, that's what I was about to say. How how did you feel uh, when you at least heard that, that the Cincinnati Bengals made it, to, made it to the Super Bowl? Well, I didn't feel any kind of way because I'm not a fan, but I know... The city was excited and proud. So I'm, I've lived in many other, I've lived in other countries and cities. So Cincinnati, I've only been back there since March of 2020. So okay. I haven't followed the, the the lines of what they were doing before or after, but I know that they, they tried. So that's great. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. So you're you you just mentioned that you travel so are you originally from ohio or yes, i'm from cincinnati mm -hmm. i lived in florida for about 18 years mm -hmm. i've lived in asia vietnam thailand china oh, mexico okay. so i I've, I've been around indianapolis okay. texas san antonio texas so I, I've, I've been around now you say the you you've been to other continents so how how yeah. was the how was the culture in in those particular continents at least for a woman of uh of color what what was it like for you down there Well I tell you Vietnam was amazing I was a little bit afraid to move there because everybody said they don't like Americans and because of the the war and everything but they totally embraced me those people are amazing of course they don't get to see black people so everywhere I went I was treated like Beyonce I mean, they, they, they would touch me, they would give me free things, but I tell you the difference between, the reason I left Vietnam is because they eat dog over there. Oh. So to be honest, I was, I was, I was getting real hungry. <laughs> uh, I was eating a lot of peanut butter and I said, I don't have to live like this. So that's the only reason I left Vietnam was because I just was afraid I didn't want to eat any dog. But in China, China was a different story. China treated me like a zoo animal on display. Mm. Um, I went to China to do business didn't work out too well. Um, I, I, I'll just say this. I left China like a runaway slave in the middle of the night, and I'm not exaggerating. China was horrible. <laughs> Man, you, you said so, in the middle of the night. You did a you did a model on China. I leave Cleveland, Ohio, 35 years, and leave my heart, a good part of my heart and soul there. <laughs> well, you thing you do over there so i had to strategically plan my escape and i did so actually i got out of there about two months before covid so that was excellent right on time the reality versus the real 
kind of blurred the lines for people like myself that that see China as far as watching it on TV and and the news and everything. The realities I'll of China say, is de- definitely different down there. Yeah, China, I will give it to them. They are smart technology wise. They they are on top of things. I think if we got to go head to head with China, my money's on China. I'm sorry, China. China's no joke. They got some stuff going on over there. But I just, I mean, I really, I went through some things. I feel like I got maybe some PTSD from China. I mean, China, I, I, I all I can say is, I just, I, when they realized I was gone, it took 48 hours. They sent me a message and said if I was still in the country, I wasn't getting out. And if oh. I was out of the country, I wasn't allowed to come back. Oh. By that time, I was in Chicago. And I was like, thank you, God. I don't want to go back. Oh. So yeah, China was off the chain. Oh man, they they was about to they they was about to lock you up abroad for what? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Uh, well, see, my mouth got me in a lot of trouble. But my mouth, trust, even in Thailand, Thailand, I was gonna get locked up. And oh my God, Thailand, Thailand, Thailand I, I, hey, Thailand is corrupt. That's all I can say. They just want your money. But yeah, my mouth got me in so much trouble over in them countries. It's unbelievable. Oh, my big mouth. I got a big mouth. Can't help it. I talk from my heart. I'm real. My God. You, you say, your, oh, my God. No, you did not say your mouth. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And so oh. people now, I will say, okay, sassy woman, trucker. But they, apparently there's a sassy trucker, which I had never heard of. So I had some people say, why didn't, why you pick that name? There's a young lady named Sassy Trucker. Little popular female trucker. Earlier this year, uh, she became, she she was locked up abroad. She was hemmed up in Dubai because of reasons. Yes, she has the name of Sassy Trucker. And I seen a few of those comments in your in your comment on the one video. Her name is right. Sassy Trucker. Your name is Sassy Woman Truckers. I mean, right? And I mean, it's my brand because <laughs> I have my own business, Sassy Woman Coaching. So I've had that for like ten years. So for me to, I looked up Sassy Woman Trucker. It was available for YouTube, and that's what I took. So I, it, I I had never heard of her. And so for people who say that, I'm like, like you're not creative. Why I pick somebody else's name? And I was like, it's not the same. And that's my brand. So it's all good. So okay. I have Sassy Woman Coaching, which is what I was doing when I was traveling the world. And that's how I was making my money. And I'm Sassy Woman Trucker. And that's how I'm going to make my money whenever I get really started because I haven't gotten started yet because I can't get out of training. <laughs> okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about Sassy Woman the, the 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 brand so what what were you doing before trucking i mean what was what was sassy woman the brand was doing before trucking okay well what it is i used to be a substance abuse counselor and this was when i was in florida florida is like the rehab capital of the world they say come to sun sunshiny florida and get clean well, I worked for some high end abuse companies and when the I had came up with a lot of different modalities that was actually working for people. So when they were leaving, they wanted to continue to work with me. So I actually started making more money doing the coaching with them than I was doing the counseling at the drug rehab. So that's how that became. So I left the drug rehab field and I started Sassy Woman Coaching. So people were paying me a lot of money to have sessions with me. And that's how I was able to leave the country and still work until I got to China. Now, China shut me down because over there, they don't allow Google, Facebook, all that. You can get VPNs, but they don't work for China. So they, they shut you down after you can just keep switching and switching. So anyway, that's how that was my livelihood until I got to China. So and then basically when I left China, I went to Mexico. And I was chilling in Mexico when then COVID hit and I came. Well, when I came back to the United States, because when I left, I was going to be like Tina Turner. I wasn't coming back here. I was going to find my man, which I did have a big niece proposed to me. But I, he said, you can stay, marry me. You can stay in the country for five years. I was like, I don't want to be here for five more minutes. But anyway, so I came back to the United States with nothing I had because I left. Only thing I left China with was what I could carry because I needed them not to know I was going to the airport. 
also had to have somebody else scan their phone to get me on the subway to get to the airport so they wouldn't know it was me. It was during the holiday when they were closed down, so they gave me a little edge. But anyway, so when I came back to the United States, I didn't have anything but two suitcases. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a house. I didn't have anything. So I had to start over. So um, that's when I had to pivot. And I bought a car, bought a new car, and I was doing Uber and Lyft during COVID. And then I started buying new pallets of stuff from like Walmart and Target. So I became a reseller. So I was doing all that during COVID because I made connections in China. So when people were wearing a face mask, I had bought those face shields. So I had got them for like a dollar fifteen cent each, about two thousand of them, and I was selling them for ten dollars each. So I made a quick twenty thousand dollars, and then I turned that money over. And so that's what I was doing during COVID. Well, then I was thinking like, well, what am I do now? Because I don't leave the country again, but I want to leave full time. I just want to go for a little while and come back. So truck driving. I had always, when I was younger, I said, hey, I want to be a truck driver. So I went to CDL school, and here I am today. It's been almost. It's been about 45 days, almost uh, going on 90 days, and I'm still trying to find my way because I can't get past the trainers. In in different countries that you that you have traveled, that was gonna that that was gonna be one of my questions. Um, that you traveled to those uh, uh, abroad was was you was you married at the time did you have did you have a significant other when you was traveling abroad no i was single i originally went there and my because my kids are grown so that's when i said hey i have nothing to be here for i'm i'm leaving so my youngest at the time was he was 18 might have been 19 and he was coming over there with me um but what happened is he went to he went his own way, he went to New Zealand or somewhere he went, Norway. That's where he went, Norway, found these little girls and stuff. And then he ended up going backpacking through Canada and all that. So I was left over there basically by myself. I, I didn't intend on being a nomad. I was going to make Vietnam my home base and just travel the world because Vietnam was so inexpensive. I mean, in Thailand, I had a brand new one bedroom condo, it was called a rich condo for $230 a month. Mm. That's cheap. That you is. could get five and six dollar massages over there mm. you can in vietnam i had floor to ceiling because they i had penthouses they don't like the top floor because it's really hot i said i'll take the top floor so i was paying 300 something dollars for a floor to ceiling windows brand new in in vietnam so my plan was to just live life i was over there so it was a poor country and life was good but then i was by myself and i had a little meltdown because I hadn't planned on, you know, my son was going to come with me and we were going to do all this and do all that. And it didn't happen. So uh, I've been through some things, but I'm still, I'm still moving forward. Shout out to you, man. Okay. Okay. So you, you basically at one point in your life, you say, Hey, I I'm, I'm here. I did everything. I, I want to try something new. And you said you liked it, the industry you you you're you're now training with with a company but you're you're having issues in all in all of that my question initially when i when i seen your video uh of course i said in my reaction video of course there was one side of the story so before you go into the story do you think the trainer okay. do you do you think the trainer would would have the same assessment of your story yes mm. for the first trainer i would say yes oh okay. he was totally checked out he he was not invested in training me at all he so so you will say if so, he was honest so you'll say that he he'll pretty much agree with what you have said about him in that video if he was honest, he would agree because he was not training me. He was he had no interest in training me. It was just I was his last meal ticket before he was going to leave the company. Okay, so let's let's hear the story. What 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 happened? What what happened with that? Well, to make a long story short, he had been with the company for I think about five years. Uh, when I first got on the truck, he let me know he was 
leaving the company. I was his last trainee. He had got another job. So um, that was the first, like, red flag for me. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I didn't know he was going to be as bad as he was, but I'm thinking like, well, if I'm his last trainee, let's see what kind of quality I'm going to get here. Well, I didn't get any. He was totally addicted to listening to audiobooks, and he didn't want to be bothered. He loved them audiobooks. When I say love them, I mean, if I was to try to ask a question or just say anything, if I was interrupting, I mean, a couple of times he was like, oh, my God, they were in the middle of getting married. And even on one day down on the truck, he cried all day long for whatever series that he was listening to that, that was happening. So um, I, when he drove, he listened to the audio books. When I was driving, he listened to the audio books. Now, if I'm a trainee and I'm driving, I, I might have some questions or concerns or something, but I felt like I was bothering him if I was to ask anything. Uh, he, was, he had that truck. Very cold. I'm talking about cold where I had to wear my coat, uh, wrap around my head. I didn't wear gloves. My hands was cold, but I didn't feel like I wanted to drive in gloves. But that's just ridiculous. I didn't even, he didn't, he never showed me any of the controls. I didn't even know where the controls was for like the the, the AC heat or whatever, because I never touched him. I didn't even know. He never even showed me anything. So basically, he was just a nightmare. He kept the truck super cold. He didn't teach me anything. We were going, We I got on a truck with him in Missouri, and we rode all the way out to Calexico, California. We going, I'm going around mountains, and I didn't know anything about the Jake break. I never heard, you know, heard of it or anything. He reaches over, tells me, get your foot off the service break, and he was breaking as I was going around these mountains. And I was like, dude, what is this? I never heard of that before. And he was like, I'll show you tomorrow. I'm, I want to get back to my book. So I was like, okay. So finally, I'm getting pissed because I was like, this is ridiculous. So I decided I wasn't going to drive anymore. So I told him, I said, I'm not driving anymore. And he had to drive. So he didn't like that. And he was asking every day. He was like, are you going to drive? I said, no. I was on the truck a total of six days. So we weren't talking a couple of those days. Um, He would only stop at truck stops. He ate fast food, Burger King, Subway. I mean, he had his favorite, McDonald's. I don't eat any of those type of foods, and I was okay with that. But he would go to truck stops the way I couldn't even Uber out, get no DoorDash or anything. It was just too remote. So I asked him, I said, can we please go somewhere where I can get me some food? He had no interest in that. So I had a meltdown one day. Um, I don't eat hot dogs. I haven't had a hot dog probably in 10 years. We got there. A Mexican food truck was over there. I got a hot two hot dogs. He got four. And I ate that hot dog, and then all of a sudden, I just got so angry, so I went off on him, and I was like, you're selfish, I'm tired of this BS, I went off this truck, and, and all this stuff, so we didn't speak for like almost two days, so fast forward that Friday night, I'm mad, he's mad, he gets on the phone, now meanwhile, all week long, I'm sending emails, I'm telling the company what's happening, she didn't even know he had another job, and while I was on the truck, Somebody, uh, the job called and said that he didn't get the job because he had too many tickets and accidents. Now, why are they having somebody training that has too many tickets and accidents for another company? I'm not sure about that, but whatever. So that day, he was not happy. So anyway, bottom line is, he told them some things. I don't know what he said, but they tried to put me off the truck. Time I go to a uh, Greyhound and all that. I said, no way. Somebody's going to have to come... Uh, t- physically take me off this truck. I'm not going on no Greyhound. And so I felt like I was being punished. So when I told the dispatcher exactly what was going on, he said, that's not what he told me. I said, well, listen, I have proof. I got emailed. So then they hooked me up with a car. The next day, he took me to Dallas. I got in a rental car. The company actually was pretty good. They paid me to drive myself back to Ohio. I was totally okay with that. So that was that situation. They set me up with a second trainer. The second trainer, I never even got on his truck because he went, he nutted up before I even got on the truck. I said, I'm not getting on the truck with another unhinged driver. Something had happened. He started screaming, I'm going to quit at this company, this and that. And I said, well, wait a minute. What about me? You're supposed to be training me. So it was just a big mess. I decided overnight I wasn't getting on that truck that next day. He started calling me. I said, listen, he, he apologized. Great. I'm still not getting on the truck. He ended up texting me 17 times. I was like, what is wrong with this fool? So they get money for 
the miles that you drive and stuff. So well, maybe I, I was another meal ticket and he was going to miss out on some money. And, and that's why he was, he went manic or something. But it started getting personal. He was like, you're overreacting like I overreacted last night. Just get on the truck. I'm the best trainer they got. He gave me some chick number. He was like, she don't even know I gave you a number. He'll tell you I'm a good trainer. So he was just going on and on and on. And I just said, listen, I'm not doing it. So I didn't get on the truck with him. Now I'm on my third trainer. And we had, we're had we having some issues. And today was the last straw for me. I hadn't been complaining. I said, I'm going to make this work. Whatever it takes to get my own, my own truck. Well, today, well, he's been doing it for a minute, but today really picked me off. He's rushing me. Um, I don't get sleep at night because he keeps it cold in there. I don't know what's, what's up with these guys. It's 30-something degrees, and they got AC on 24-7. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, he snores. I can't get sleep all the time. So in the daytime, when I want a break, he wants me to take a 30-minute break and then keep on driving. Why do I need more than 30 minutes? I'm driving five, about 520 miles a day, which is, he said, I need to do 480 to 500 miles. I'm doing that. But he want me to do it in his time. So today, he kicked me out of the seat. He was like, get out of the seat. I'm driving. And he and he's just driving like a bat out of hell to get to the rest stop. I don't know what these truckers' issues are with these truck stops and getting parking spaces. If you don't have a parking space, either reserve one or go to the next one. But we're in Yuma, Arizona right now. Been here since like 1 o'clock this afternoon. He, he rushed to get here to get this truck spot. And I've been out all day hanging out. I'm not sitting on that truck with him, but I sent the company email because I'm not going to tolerate being rushed and I'm tired. He's in and out of the truck while I'm trying to, you know, get my rest. He's eating, he's cooking, he's doing all stuff. How much rest am I getting if I'm not getting it at night? And during the day, he don't want to let me get it. So I'm, 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 I don't know what, what's going to happen, but if this third trainer don't work out, I'm just going to leave the company and go somewhere else. Ooh. Hey, let's let's unpack a little of this, man. <laughs> well, first thing first. I mean, I mean, sassy. I I mean, this is trucking. I mean, it, there's there's a lot that that you're gonna have to get used to and get adapted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I I was listen. Believe me, I I was there. I I was in your shoes once. I, I never understood uh, why I had to do this and why I had to rush that and why you act the way you act. I mean, I had my meltdown too, but as I got as I got adapted to to trucking, sister girl, I'm here to tell you, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to eat at your favorite restaurants out here. I'm 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 just saying. I'm I'm listen. I, I'm I'm just saying. You're not go. I, you you can. It's possible. It is possible. I'm not going to say never. If you put your mind to it, sassy, you 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 say you're going to get to that Applebee's. That's 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 down the way. You're going to make it happen. But I'm just saying. Sometimes it's not that plausible. You're gonna be you you're gonna be in situations you're gonna you're gonna be in situations where you're gonna be hemmed up at the at the shipper and receiver and you're gonna be like, well, god damn, how come you can't do this, that, and the third? You're gonna be hemmed up there. You're gonna be in in situations where I gotta use the bathroom and they only have a porta potty. You feel me? So well, I'm going outside. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go outside. I'm not using the porta potty. Uh, hey, so, let, hey. let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. I got it down to a science. I've been peeing in a cup on that top bunk because <laughs> he and listen at night. It's it first of all, it's cold outside. I got to put on a coat. He he makes me park way. I got to walk a damn mile to get in the building where he goes in the back of the truck and and, and takes a piss at night. Well, I was like, either he's going to be sharing the back of that truck with me, I'm, I'm going to just be up here at the top bunk doing what I do. So I've been pitching in the cup, in that top bunk, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm, and when I get my own truck, I will have my own portable potty. Oh, yeah. I will have things that I can eat on the truck. Right. But meanwhile, uh, I just got to do what I got to do, and that's what I've been doing. Trust me, this last time I have, I have my, my three little words was just, 
just get through this. Just get through this. You can do it. I, I can do it. I can do it. But today was the last straw when he just keep rushing me. It was 40 minutes. He was like, are you ready? I said, no, I'm not ready. And he was like, well, just get out of the way. Just get out. And I, I don't appreciate that. You're not going to kick me out of the seat and drive like a bat out of hell to get somewhere. And this little shitty ass truck stop we at, the, the showers. Now, I will give him credit. He got more showers in than I do. I've been taking some whole baths. These showers out here, if it ain't clean enough for me, I can't do it. And we went to one place. Oh, it was a terminal, and the bathroom looked like it was from a 1950s horror film. I said, I'm not going in there to take no shower. He was like, suit yourself. And he, and he has been showering, but that's fine. But I, I just, I don't know why he was rushing to get here. There, it's just like, it's not, it's just, I hand it. But anyway, I left. I've been out right now. I'm in a Mexican restaurant. And when I leave here, I'm going somewhere else. I'm not going back to that truck till I feel like it sometime tonight because I'm not sitting on that truck all day long with him well, or any of, any of them trainers. I'm not doing it. Well, as far as the break goes, I mean, I, I can agree with you, too. I mean, 30 minutes is 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 crazy, but. That's what these companies inspect of us. They they want us to take that thirty minute break, and and be back on the road after thirty minutes. Some companies is angry. But why? As they, long as it, as long as I get my drive time in the five hundred miles, I've been putting in five five hundred twenty miles. So it shouldn't matter what time frame, as long as I'm DOT uh, compliant. He want me to do it so he can be parked somewhere about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. We, yeah. we start. I'm on. Uh, we start. I, I've been starting to drive it like four in the morning and stuff. And sassy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to say, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. The earlier the drive, the earlier you can park because after after a certain time, after a certain time. You're not going to be. You're not going to get no spots. You when you get th these is the stuff that you gonna that you hearing about now that you think that's not a big deal. Trust me, when you get into your truck, it's gonna all become a big deal to you because you're gonna get to pilot flying J loves and every last one of those truck stops are full after a certain time. You won't even be able. You won't even be able to park in the in the in the slightest because there'll be trucks on top of trucks on top of trucks at a certain time. That's why I I've mean, seen that. I, and that's Pay why twenty two dollars and, and get a reserve uh, spot. Uh, I'm okay. I've uh, already uh, done uh, that. Uh, uh, I don't even have a truck. Uh 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 uh. uh, uh what? Let me listen. What? Depending on the company that you're driving for. All right. Yeah. Luckily, luckily for me, my company pays for my reserve parking but that's not always the case i hear you i hear you yeah just pay. i'm okay with paying it out of my pocket i'm just, okay with that just if reserve i, I want to face that bad i'm gonna pay for it right just reserve your spot and you think you're gonna you think it's gonna be there when you get there that's not always possible too you're gonna you you listen sassy you you're gonna learn you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna learn today you're gonna learn today you gonna learn today. I'm I'm telling you. You gonna learn. You you gonna be like, God damn that lockout man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well let I'm, me I'm pay for a spot that ain't there when I get there. They gonna they better they better comp me two or three more extra nights or something. <laughs> we gonna do something about it. Uh, they ain't calling me sassy for no for nothing, okay? <laughs> I hear you. Now listen, I, I do agree with you about the drivers, about the trainers. Uh, they they need to be a little bit more patient, a little bit more focused on on getting you trained. It's just unfortunate that you ran into these unfortunate trainers that's that's only caring about themselves. And what I mean by that is, of course, they get paid the miles. They get paid all the miles that you drive. They getting paid for all the miles they drive. They getting yeah. paid for. They're getting paid for you yeah. being in the truck. They're getting paid extra. They get paid after you upgrade or whatever the case. I don't know how it is at that company, but I knew when I was training at a U.S. Express, they got the trainer got paid my miles and he got paid when I upgrade. Right. I'm, not, I'm not sure how that is across the board, but it's just unfortunate that that you're running into 
these bad trainers. But the thing is, if you keep at it, eventually you're going to run into that trainer that's going to that's going to do what he needs to do to get you get you to where you need to be. So if if this is what you want, don't don't give up. And and if it's not with this company, then yeah, of course. I mean, try try your hand at a different company. Or maybe for sure. Maybe the next company might be better, but as far as these trainers go, like I said, there's there's a lot of them that that just don't care about about the trainee and all they just want is a money grab. And they just need to I be, agree. They need to be a little bit more focused, a little bit more contrived on getting what you need to do so that you can do what you need to do while you're out here. But again, Sassy, I'm I'm telling you. You 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 gonna you gonna find you gonna you gonna see you, you definitely gonna see the first trainer though in the story off the video. I I wanted to ask you. I was like I'm gonna ask her this when when I talked to her. The guy I I guess you say he he was um. He he had another job lined up or something like that, and you said the company didn't know. Yeah. Do you feel that you probably could have you, you kind of dry snitched on him? Well, I did, but I didn't know at the time because I said, I'm his last trainee. And she said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, he got another job. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she didn't know. <laughs> and then when he didn't have another job, I let him know that too. I said, well, they called and said that he... He had too many tickets and too many accidents, and they weren't going to hire him. So there you go. Wow. And when I talked to his boss, he said some of the things that I had said he had heard in the past, and I was just confirming them. So <laughs> apparently he had, I wasn't the first one that had to say some, something. And so, yeah, he said he would definitely be uh, taken care of, and I believed him. So whatever that means is what it means. And I was okay with his fate because he really didn't have to treat me the way he treated me. And a lot of people in the comments were supportive and a lot of other people were just like, suck it up. And I said, no, I'm not going to suck it up. I, I'm I'm too old to be dealing with some BS. I'm not going to be mistreated or in an abusive relationship because that's what it felt like. I said, Shit, yeah, I'm too old for this. So no, mm -mm. All right. I don't regret leaving and i don't regret i'm on my third trainer and if it don't work out i will i'm gonna i'm gonna be in this business now i don't know about over the road i'm getting a little burnt out but i think if i had my own truck i'd do better but definitely i can't i don't know how these people i've never been to jail people say it's smaller than the jail cell i don't know what the jail cell look like but this shit is crazy being in the truck that close quarters with a stranger i don't like it at all yeah, that's that's another thing that a lot of people, when they get into this industry, they think they're going to jump right from getting the CDL to right into a truck. It don't work that way. Believe me. Well, I tell you, Trans Am. Way. I went to Trans Am, honey. I was desperate. For Trans Am, if you do seven-day orientation and pass, they'll give you a truck with no trainer. I'm going to do a video about that because I've been there, done it. I had that experience. Yeah, look out for that that video. <laughs> okay, Transit. So you. I've been so around. You, so you. So what happened with what? What happened with Transam? Well, I will tell you this. Mm -hmm. I did the seven days, mm -hmm. and I, I, the, the, I last the whole seven days mm -hmm. where they give you a test at the end, and I tell you what, I don't know what the freak happened. I did not pass the last test, and I couldn't understand because all week long I had I had done the maneuvers. I had backed up just perfectly fine, everything, but on the last day I didn't. And I tell you, God is good because they give you that truck now. And, and I, when I do my own review, it's not, they have a lot of bad reviews that's from that company. I didn't have that experience. It actually was a great experience. They put you up in a hotel for the seven days. They feed you two meals a day, which I didn't eat the food. I, I bought my own, but for people who like Papa John's and all that shit, they had it. It was no problem. But anyway. So the only thing I think that saved me, because when I got on the truck with the third trainer, I had to do the same exact maneuver that I failed 
at Trans Am, and I did it fine for the third trainer. God is good. I think I failed that because what I will say about Trans Am, if you are not, you're new, if new drivers, they are new. If you're not familiar with the truck, then don't take it. They are giving away trucks out there. They will put you in the truck. I'm still in contact with three people who went through the same program. They're out there clueless. They don't tell you nothing about, like, they expect, I'm like, it's, we're new drivers. Are, are we expected to know this? They put some keys in your hand and send you off to go. And I don't think I would have done very well with that. The people that I know are watching YouTube videos. They don't show you about trying the, the, doing the tandems. They didn't never go under anything under the hood. I didn't even know I learned the APU. You have to check the oil. Uh, they didn't even tell us that. They showed us a little buttons on the APU and that was it. And then somebody told me, you have to change the oil on that. I mean, check it. I was like, no, I didn't know that. So I personally believe I was blessed enough not to be given that truck because I would have been out there on the road un, un, totally unprepared. So in that instance, Trans Am, I mean, if we're about trucks already and, and you're confident, you can do it. But I don't think I would have done very well. So I was kind of glad to come back to a trainer. Unfortunately, not this trainer, but I do feel like I do need the training. But Trans Am, I have nothing bad to say about them besides that they just going to give you the keys to a truck and send you on your way. That's it. All right, Trans Am. Shout out to Trans Am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we heard stories about some, four days later, somebody totaled a truck after they got the keys. And I said, well, damn, mm. what are they doing out here? But and they, they you, if you can pass the maneuvers, they give you the keys to the truck. So you, you said uh, you you said they 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 throw you straight to the rules. What I would even uh, they sure do. Mm, mm. And I ain't mad at them. They paid you a hundred dollars a day while you were there. Like I said, I I personally, if you if you if you're confident enough to take that truck and be able to automatically know these things, or you're mechanically inclined, take it and go. But I wouldn't have done well with that because I just don't know enough. So I was actually thankful I failed. But if, I ain't gonna lie, if they would have given them keys, I would have been out there. So back to the first trainer, you you, you guys had your issues, and the the mm-hmm. last place you was at, you was in uh, Houston, Texas, right? Dallas, Dallas, uh, Dallas, Texas. So. Mm-hmm. So you you so you got confirmation from the fleet manager to to get up out the truck. The the the, the, the let's be clear, the the trainer didn't kick you out the truck, right? The trainer, no, he did not. Okay. I wanted off the truck. He wanted me off the truck. They tried to kick me off Friday night mm-hmm. onto the Greyhound until I you know, let him know, hey, I got proof of what's been going on out here. Cause he lied on me. I never found out what he said, but the guy said, that's not the story he's telling us. He was telling her I was refusing to drive, which I was. I did refuse to drive. Cause I was like, I'm not driving. You drive. Because he was making me mad. I, I didn't want to drive with a cold on. that's uncomfortable. I was cold. I was hungry. I was tired. So I did refuse to drive. So I'm not sure what else he told them. But once they heard my side of the story and I said, I had emails. Then I, I got treated like, okay, we're going to get you a rental car. We're going to pay for you to drive yourself, blah, blah, blah. So I was okay with that. So you drove yourself all the way from Dallas to Ohio? Yes. How, and they paid me like 200 and some dollars for that. And I thought that was fair. How, how was and they paid for the rental car. And they were going to pay for a hotel that night. I didn't want to pay for a hotel because if you watch my first video, they had it. When I first went to orientation, they tried to put me in this uh, roach Roach Motel, hotel or something, the Econo Lodge. I said, I'm not staying in that. So I went and got my own hotel, and they actually gave me $50 towards it. So I think they've been pretty fair. But that night, he said, pull over and uh, get your hotel. I said, no, no, I'm good. So that's uh, I'm used to driving and, and doing things. So that little Dallas, Ohio was not a big deal. I drove it, and I didn't, I didn't stay in a hotel. How, how was the trip, trip up uh, from Dallas to, back to Ohio? Oh, it was fine. I was by myself. First thing I did when I got the truck was went and got me something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had fuel for my body. I had got me some shrimp and grits, and I was good to go. That's all I wanted was some real food. 
so you wanted some real food and not truck stop food. I hey. Yeah, I, I guess when you get your own truck, man, you probably might have to come with some utensils because sometimes you're not going to be in the areas to get that good gourmet home cooked meal. The only, the only we'll home, see. the only home cooked meal that you're going to be close to is Denny's. <laughs> That'll be six fifty. I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money? Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast. Oh, yeah, we're not doing that. Oh. See, I'm a juicer, so I'm going to have my Vitamix on the truck, I'm going to have my juicer on the truck, and I'll be fine. So, in, in even now, this third truck that I'm on, I have my juicer with me. I bought it. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing simple stuff like grapefruits and oranges and stuff. So mm-hmm. when I can't have real food, I do have backup. So I have had no complaints on this truck. Now, he cooks. He cooks deer meat, hamburger, sausage, all the shit right up under my nose. I'm mm-hmm. you know, up in that top bunk and all that shit is right there. I put down the windows and he put the windows back up. I thought, oh, honey, we need to ventilate up in here. <laughs> so when I get out of that truck, I got to have to fumigate everything I got. That damn truck is dirty. He cooks two meals a day. I ain't seen no soap, no water. He ain't took a skillet out of there to clean or nothing. He just put that shit away and get it right back out and cooking in some more. Oh. And that's fine. That's on him. But it's just a lot. I wasn't complaining. I swear I'm a positive person. And I just want to embrace my new lifestyle. But I don't want, I just can't deal with this, with these trainers. They These trainers need to have some type of uniformity. I think they're just letting People who, if their requirement is you've been driving a year, so so what you you drove a year, you that don't mean you can train somebody else. And I understand I'm coming into their space, but they need to understand that they need to to give a little too. Because yeah, this guy here, the third one, I mean, I'm freezing in that fucking truck. I mean, at night I'm sleeping in my clothes. I put a onesie on on top of my clothes. I get in the sleeping bag. I got two blankets. I'm still laying there freezing my ass off because he got the AC on and it's 39 degrees outside. These old white men need to they need to go go do something because they they stay hot all the time. I don't know what's wrong with their blood or something, but it's ridiculous. It's it it got to be some type of camaraderie on 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 the trucks with with, with trainer trainee teams. You you guys gotta you guys gotta conform with each other, man. And it's it's kind of hard to do when. When you got you got the trainee that's there to learn, and you got a trainer that just don't care about you and just wants the money. That's about it. Uh, right. ev- eventually, you're gonna you 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 going through the motions right now. Uh, we all been there. Well, my my first trainer wasn't all that hot. I I looked up and got with a second trainer, and he was the one that got me together. My guy D Nitty, shout out to D Nitty from Night. He's a trainer extraordinaire. He he'll he'll get any driver right because he's focused on safety and productivity when he trains. So every time I have a question about any training issues, he's he's my go-to. He's my go-to. I have a female that's my go-to as well. Her name is Pinky over at Stevens Transport. So if I have any questions about any type of training or something like that, those two will be my definite go-to as far as ch- getting training information. As I said before, especially training a woman, I, sometimes women can be difficult. I I I I get it. <laughs> sometimes dri- sometimes drivers. Hey, watch it. Some sometimes drivers, especially male drivers. You got a handful of them that don't even want to be bothered with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm, yeah. and I'm beginning to learn that, hell, even the women trainers, <laughs> some, some <laughs> of you guys can't get along with each other either. So I know a lot of a lot of females be like, yeah, I want a female trainer. Okay, well, you get that female trainer, you all still have the same problems with the male. <laughs> so... I'm, hey. I don't care. I, I I don't have a preference. I just need somebody to just be decent. That's all, and, and want to do their job. That's all. Just want to do your job. It's well, not that, I mean, you're getting paid extra, and I'm not here. I'm making a hundred dollars a day, and you're making X amount or, or whatever. 
and way more than I'm making, just just earn your keep. That's all. It's, it's not too much to ask. I got you. I got you. Well, third trainer, hopefully it is the charm. Um, how, 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 how much longer do you think you can last with this trainer before you be, be before you check out? I plan on probably going AWOL. We're on our way to Michigan. We got to be to Michigan by Thursday. We and see I'm probably going to be off that truck. Okay. If, if, I, if I make it that long. Depending on what they say Monday, because I sent an email today, I will not be rushed. If she don't check him on that. And another thing is I'm having an issue is he thinks I'm doing team driving with him. I already told him I'm not doing team driving. Last training, we did 6,500, 6,600 miles a, a week. I don't care what y'all did. I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not, I'm not team driving. I specifically asked for one of this company. She said they, the trainer sits in the passenger seat and the trainee drives. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not trying to sleep in that bed that he sleeps in while he's driving. I'm not getting in it. He puts his shoes all up on there. Just the truck is nasty and dirty. I, I, there's no way. I don't care if I cover it up. I'm not getting in that bed. And I'm not trusting somebody for me to try to go to sleep with while they're driving. And he'll make about $4,000 a week or something during that, doing that. So that's what he wants to do. I already told him two times. I'm not team driving. So Monday, she needs to check. If they feel like I need a team drive, I'm, I'm off the truck. I'm done. If they feel like him rushing me is not a problem, I'm done. So that's, that's where I'm at at this point. I have no problem with walking away. All right. So now that, that, that you got that looking forward to, have you been looking at other companies? Oh, yeah. I got, listen, honey, I'm in it to win it. I have all my endorsements, including a Twix card. I know I wouldn't need it right now, but I got it. So I'm not paying. I can, and Snyder, they wanted to hire me for Tanker, but Snyder, Snyder, what? Slave wages. $10 an hour for 50 hours a week for four and a half weeks to train for tanker and 44 cents a, a mile. I said, slave and me, I know my words. I don't care if I'm a new driver or not. I'm not working for that. So yeah, Snyder's out. But yeah, Swift, what is that? They call it Welfare Express. What's the one is something, uh, what's the one, Western. not Werner, but uh, West. yes, Western Express. He keeps calling me. That guy said, oh, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. So Swift, that role, I mean, I have plenty of options. I just, and, and even the company I'm with, I making, I, I, I knew I was going to make less because I like their, their lane. I come to the Midwest, pick up a day or two, I would be there with cold, and then I'm coming out here to California, Arizona, New Mexico. I love it. It's beautiful out here. And that's the reason I chose that company, because they have those laws like that. And I was okay with that, but. I'm not married to this. I will. I, I definitely can have another job in a day or two. That's not a. That's not an issue. I wanted to be at this company, and and that's why I, I've been trying to work with them. But depending on what it said on Monday, I'm gonna. I'm either gonna finish with him, and I'm not doing team driving, and he's not rushing me, or I'm out. I just go find somewhere else. Well, again, sassy woman trucker, thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it, man, sitting down with the well, lockout thank man. Thank you for having me. Not thank you. Problem. I appreciate you. You're I'm welcome. excited. One of these days I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get it right. <laughs> you say you're going to get it right, man. <laughs> uh, again, hopefully this, uh, hopefully this third trainer is the charm. Hopefully he he he'll, he'll get you right. If not, you you gotta keep uh gotta keep your head up, and hopefully you would get you would get something that you uh that you want. You, you keep all working. right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. All and right. for your listeners, go over to go over to YouTube, Sassy Woman Trucker, and make sure you go ahead and uh subscribe. <laughs> once I get my act together, once I get my act together, I plan on having great content out there. I'm going to be at the rest stop. I do have a great personality, so I want to be able to, like I want to be the Oprah in trucking. <laughs> so I want to be able to interview interview truckers and, and, and others who hang out at the truck stop. Let me say this real quick. I, my, my, 
my heart went out. I was in uh in the bathroom. I told you I've taken a couple of whole baths, mm-hmm. but it was these two women in there washing their panties out in 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 the, in the sink, <laughs> and I said shit. And my mind wasn't right at the time because it's all about me right now. But those are the type of things I, I really should have took my phone out and, and interviewed them or whatever, seen if they wanted me to interview. I would, you know, block their faces out if I had to. But those are the type of things I want to bring to the forefront. But I just right now, I'm, I'm just, it's all about me and I'm trying to get myself situated. But eventually, I do want to branch out and just be known to, to go around the country and interview truckers and, and, and get it down to the real nitty gritty of what's going on out here in the street. The run, the 